The SuperView is a very uh, ambitious uh, satellite program. I think it's too early to really come to a conclusion. I still think we're in the early days of this new space or small satellite revolution. Clearly the satellites that are up there today built by the likes of you know, Airbus and Lockheed Martin and Ball Aerospace for companies like Digital Globe and, and Airbus um, are tremendously capable and serve the you know, unique needs of specific user sets, primarily governments. What the small satellite revolution is doing is providing more ubiquity, more capability for different classes of customers, but it's still early. You know, as we sit here today, Skybox now has three satellites on orbit now, acquired by Google, called Terabella. They're launching four more here this week. I think as these satellites get to orbit and prove their capabilities, then yes, it will create meaningful and lasting change. Clearly, Planet Labs has done a tremendous amount as far as launching spacecraft, and it's providing capabilities that really never existed before. And it's going to be, the next few years will determine if these become profitable businesses and do we create whole new markets? I believe we will, but it's not without us challenges. I think video is still too early to say. Uh, for the few unique cases we've talked to our customers about, uh, they're very excited about the promise of video. Uh, they believe they can get much more in 60 seconds of video than they could over multiple pictures over multiple orbits, because what they do is they establish patterns of life. But it's still relatively unproven, uh, so I think it's hard to say how much of the future market is going to be attributed to video. We have that capability that we'll be demonstrating, not on these first two satellites, but the next generation of satellites. Obviously, uh, Terabella has had that capability, and we've heard very positive things. I fully support that. Um, Actually, with this acquisition that we did, uh, the new Black Sky platform, when we roll it out, is going to have two different capabilities. We're going to have a content management system where you can task and look at data from not only our spacecraft, ad additional spacecraft, but then we also have the ability to fuse that data. And this is data from multiple spectrum. Think video, think still imagery, think color imagery, but also synthetic aperture radar, ship tracking AIS, airplane tracking ADSB. I think it's fusing all those data sources together, which will create unique geospatial insights, which will drive further growth in our industry. I think you're seeing a convergence of Internet of Things and, and satellite imaging, because ultimately what you're doing is, it's all about geospatial. It's about correlating information in time and space. Um, and I think that's the next major innovation and one that we're really focused on is merging the Internet of Things, for example, where are all the shipping containers on the planet right now, and then merging that with other geospatial data sources, including satellite imagery. Uh, so I think it's a new frontier, it's a very exciting opportunity for all of us. So I think we're going through a geospatial revolution. The way I think about it, um, for, for the older generation, including me, we grew up with paper maps. I think the young generation has only known Google Earth. So I really define the paper map era as 1.0, uh, Google Earth is 2.0, and we're really going to a new generation called 3.0, which is with over a decade of Google Earth, we now know what the planet looks like, and we want to see how it changes. And it's harnessing all these mobile technologies, the Internet of Things, and this ubiquitous satellite intelligence to really create a picture about the global economy in real time and all the things that live in it. It's about the activities and the patterns of life. And again, that's the new frontier for geospatial. Basically, when you can start to fuse all of this geospatial data together, the only way to really process it is to use machine and deep learning to recognize these patterns, whether it's patterns in a picture or patterns of activity based on tracking it in time and space on the surface of the Earth. For example, one of the things that our platform has been doing recently is looking at Twitter feeds and using keywords in deep learning to identify the Syrian refugees and then watching them move across the surface uh, of the planet, specifically through the Middle East into Greece and up into Europe by just tracking their Twitter feeds that are coming off their mobile devices. So 
again, I think it all fuses together and that's where the new frontier that we have to focus on uh, resides. I mean, ultimately, having access to that data is then how do you harness it and what do you do with it? And ultimately, you're doing one of two things. You're, you're trying to use it to operate your business better, uh, to help the society and solve specific problems. And that's where I think this new uh, wave of geospatial companies is going to come into play. They're going to harness these platforms that provide insights uh, to actually use it to solve some of the world's you know, challenges and, and the pressing needs of our time, whether it's the environment, displaced people, uh, economic changes, uh, track the world's commodities. Um, ultimately, it's understanding this planet and, and democratizing that access uh, is going to be very powerful um, in, in helping our planet.